David Griffith. Okay. I proceed, Mr. Griffith. Thank you. My name is David Griffith. I have come here today with a heavy heart, all the way from California, with my wife Dawn for support. I have been appointed by the rest of my family to give this statement. I'd like to thank the state of Rhode Island for allowing me this opportunity. I only hope that I will be given the courtesy of completing this statement without interruption. It is nearly impossible to share with you the loss that my family has been dealing with during the last three and a half years. It has also made even more difficult for me to read this considering the fact that the party responsible are here in this courtroom. I hope that all of you would truly hear what I have to say. My brother, Scott S. Griffith, lost his life in the fire at the Station Nightclub on February 20th, 2003. Scott was only 41 years old when his life was taken from him in a most horrific way. Scott was born and raised in Southern California. He lived the first 40 years of his life there. He worked for a company that was purchased by a company in Rhode Island. Scott was faced with the dilemma of losing his job to stay in California or transfer to Rhode Island and leave his family, most of which reside in California. After weighing all the options, he chose to transfer to Rhode Island and move himself and his 13-year-old daughter, Casey, to Rhode Island. They both lived in Rhode Island for a total of six months before his tragic death. My wife and I have traveled to Rhode Island from California to try and express our thoughts and the rest of our families of the loss of someone that meant so much to us all. Scott was a person that had so much life in him. Not a day go, goes by that we don't think of him. My mom still cries regularly for the loss of her second son, even after three and a half years. The pain and the torment has not gone away. My dad has had to rely on prescription medicines in order to cope with his loss and the depression that has come with it. Scott's daughter, Casey, has lost the most important person in her life. Scott and Casey both had a mutual love for music. It was something they both could do together. Casey has not only lost the guiding force of her beloved father, but has also lost her buddy. They both had a tremendous amount of love for each other. Scott was and remains an irreplaceable part of this family. It is as if we have all lost a piece in each of us that can never be replaced. We all live our lives with a hole inside that was once filled by Scott. Scott was taken from us by something that should have been avoided if the proper care had been taken. It has been hard to lose someone who was so much a part of us so many memories, and all we have left now is those memories. It truly pains me to know that an irresponsible and reprehensible act has resulted in the fact that a young lady no longer has a father. I have lost a brother. My kids no longer have their special uncle. And perhaps worst of all, my mom and dad have had to bury one of their sons. I want to reiterate that this loss was a senseless tragedy brought about by the irresponsible and reprehensible actions of a few people. We as a community have lost an enormous amount, 100 people, and have left even more scarred for life. As hard as it is for me to say, I feel more for the poor victims that have to live the rest of their days scarred and in some cases incapable of even taking care of their most basic needs. The people that have the responsibility for making sure that this would not happen have truly let us all down, and they don't have to live the rest of their lives scarred and helpless. My hope is that the people that are responsible for making sure that justice is served will hand down an appropriate sentence that will take into account that the actions of a few have ruined so many lives forever. I feel that all of us have been victimized a second time, as I have said. We as the public were failed the first time by a number of people that were supposed to look out for us not only as taxpayers, but also as fellow citizens. I feel that we are being victimized again by the people that are supposed to uphold the law and get justice and restitution from the people that break the law and harm others. I therefore make this heartfelt plea to those in charge that you not discount the losses we all have to live with for the rest of our lives. No one can ever erase our loss, we know that. 
but you can bring justice where justice is certainly due. I want to close with this final quote. He who walks with integrity walks securely, but he who perverts his ways will become known. Proverbs 10 and 9. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Griffith. Please call our next presenter.